company's coming, Luther. How many? Two. It's just two. They trailing anything? Uh-uh. <laughs> Ain't you fast, though. I was dead asleep. Well, you're lucky you're not asleep dead. Chet's got some. Just don't go kicking me. Don't you tell me, Billy. Don't you never tell me. Easy pickings, Luther. Them horses look good. Money in the bank. <laughs> you can't see money from up here. Now, you sell horses, Billy, and you get money. Oh, you, you mean it that way? You better learn, Billy. You're threading me right out of patience. And that old man better not move a whisker. You can't be that dumb. Well, you want him killed, don't you? Billy, Billy, I don't care what happens to that old man and that young man. But one shot has spooked them horses for fair. Like it's not, Billy, they, they bolt and come up lame. Well? Well, you can't sell a lame horse. Now you think on that. Let them come on up, Chet. We'll give them a welcome. kill you. I swear if we wasn't kin, I'd break your neck. I don't mean nothing, Luther. Let's make for a fact. You don't mean nothing. So the old man's horse is long gone. Yeah, that's right. So the old man's horse is gone. Now we got one lousy horse and whatever it was well, carrying. Well, nothing. Chet, see if that old man is dead. Leave him alone. A little brother here just... This might be a killer. They're gone, Luther. They can't be gone. They're hiding the hairs. Like they're swallowed up. Leg won't bear much weight. Uh, and it twisted it off. <laughs> There's no way to ride, boy. Get saddle sores on your belly. Well, I had to get you down here one way. Well, I thought she was a goner. Well, knocked the wind out of me, sure enough. Take it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Help me to stretch out, did you? Okay. okay. Oh. <clears throat> I'm gonna get you a little water now. Lay back. Yeah. Bad resting up here. You're fried on that trail anyway. I wonder where my horse got to. Well, he, he bolted and ran off. And now look, we can always get a, another horse, but it'd be a little hard put getting me another grandpa. <laughs> yeah, well, if you do get yourself one, get one with two good legs. Well, it ain't busted, is it? No, it's just twisted good. Don't feel like it's mine. Don't feel like it wants to be, neither. Well, I, I'll uh, get us some firewood and make some coffee. Fine. Uh. Oh, 
old man. Don't you say nary a word. You don't need those logs. Drop them. My grandpa's hurt. Don't do him no more harm. We'll let you take care of your grandpa. Easy. Easy now. Now go on over to your grandpa. Step lively. I'm not a patient man. Man? Hey! Get down there and get your grandpa's gun. And don't you do him no more harm, eh? You get your foot off his hand. Maybe after we get the gun. How's your hand, Grandpa? You don't mind the hand. Just you stand straight to the boy. For both of us. Billy! Lead that horse away. We'll do the cleaning up. I may keep this in here for my own self. You don't want your grandpa to stop no more, boy. Just give us all he's got here. Give him the money, Jeff. A watch and chain, maybe. Gold ring. If you don't give it, we'll take it. You'll have to get your own chain. <laughs> Is your grandpa let you carry money, little boy? Yes, we're gonna want that too. Don't anybody move. Toss your guns aside. Get over there. I walked right into him. I bet you did. Something wrong with the odds here. They was till now. Get the watch and your money. They're leaving. Now, move on out. Don't come back. I'm not going to forget you. Well, don't try. There'll be a time. Always is. I'm Dave Henry. Well, seems like I've heard that name. Dave Henry. You've got a reputation, mister. That's so. They say you take some big chances. Well, that could be just talk. Yeah. We're much obliged to you, Dave Henry. I'm Will Sonnet. This here's my grandson, Jeff. Jeff? Yes, sir. So sure glad you came along. You can blame your horse. It was running too hard to have come very far. I was just bringing it back. Yeah. They had us cold. How bad are you hurt? Oh, twisted leg, but they broke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he took a bad fall. Something keeping you from making camp? <laughs> well, no, sir. Not now. Are you gonna stay with us? I'll stay till he's fit to ride, then I'll, I'll see you on to the next town. We're not doing our job. You can't manage to, but can you? Uh, I soon set a slippery eel. How about just keeping pace? There's no gripping with his leg. Mm hmm. Hand me your rope. Do you mind riding like Jeb Stewart? I'd like to ride as well, tied on. You served with Jeb Stewart, did you? No, well, sir. For the Union, maybe, with General Sheridan? Well, not him either. Well, it seems like it take a cavalry trooper to know about this. Well, if it works, it doesn't make any difference how I learned it, now, does it? No, sir. Not a particle. Yeah, you shouldn't slip off of there. It's just a right amount of give. It looks fine. Well, we got uh, oh, four, maybe five miles to town. Yeah, I'll make it. Oh, 
told him, Mr. Henry? Mind if I sit down? No. Those, uh, those men you ran off? Uh-huh. They just rode into town. Did they? Well, the big one, the one they call Luther. Uh-huh. He said to tell you that he'd find you. Your grandpa this morning, Jeff. Oh, some better, I guess. But with this Luther, he... Yeah, he said he'd find me out. I heard you. Well, what'll he do, Mr. Henry? <laughs> well, that's the trouble with cowards, Jeff. You never know what they'll do. You can count on a man, but... Uh, coward. <laughs> oh, you're not scared of him. I know that. Fear is what you do with it. Well, you know, I'm out of whiskey. That scares me. Yeah. Me too. Whiskey? Same as his. Kids. Mark and learn. Whiskey, that takes practice too, Jeff. Ain't no man can do that to me. How do you reckon you got there? Oh, yeah? Well, I ain't gonna be here long. I got nothing against you. I never even laid eyes on you before. You make me sick. You're just taking an awful chance. You don't seem to be afraid of anything. Well, who is it? Dave Henry. It ain't locked. Come on in. Evening, Mr. Sonny. I saw Jeff leave. I figured maybe we could talk. Well, he's seen I had supper. Then he went off to find his... find his hero. Yeah, well, I need your help about that. There ain't nothing I can do about a man who's been everywhere and done everything. Shows more courage in a few days than most men see in a lifetime. Stories I hear appear to be true. Good boy, you're Jeff. The best I ever knowed. But isn't any part of it true, what he thinks I am? I want you to see that he knows that. Oh, no, not me. No, sir. That's your job. Well, I can't live with it, Mr. Sonnet. Nobody could. There must be something else you can't live with. It's this, uh, hero business. It's too big. I, I can't handle it. It was bad enough, things folks were saying, but now I got that boy believing it. Well, there's something that's really gnawing at you. And it ain't Jeff's thinking you're so fine. I was... I was with Fetterman at Lodge Trail Ridge. That mean anything to you? Fetterman. Fetterman. He was Captain of Cavalry out in Fort Phil Kearney. That's right. Yeah. It was a slaughter again, the Sioux and the Cheyenne. All the troopers was killed. All but one. Lieutenant Henry Davis. 
He ran. Scared yellow, he ran and left his command. Lieutenant Henry Davis. All of my men were killed because I wasn't there to lead them. Henry Davis was a coward then, and Dave Henry's been a running coward ever since. Yeah, I know it had to be something. It don't help none that you saved our lives. Just trying to get myself killed like all those other times before. I keep on trying. I just can't live with myself, Mr. Sonic. How long will it have to go on? Time. I was afraid I couldn't count on you. You won't be so high and mighty long. Can't forget the way you shamed me. Get it over with. as soon as I can. You, you let me be, Jeff. You see, it, it had to... It had to be. It had to happen. Just, just this way. It didn't need to happen. And Mr. Henry didn't need to get killed. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you had to see it, boy. You know, he stood there like, like he was helpless, like he was asking for it. He wasn't the same man, Grandpa. Well, we didn't get to know him too well, Jeff. And that first day, he, well, he stood up to Luther and Chet and Billy and ran them off all by himself. Those drunks in the saloon. We walked right between them. Then with their guns drawn and never even flinched one time. But that last night, with Luther, he... Well, he just wasn't the man I thought he was, Grandpa. <laughs> Not many men measure up to that. You had him ten feet tall, braver than an army, full of more good works than the a hero in a dime novel. Have you sure seen that size? Yeah, it's time you quit looking for a hero, son. There's something more important than that for you to find. Yes, sir. You being a man, that's something you got to grow into yourself. And you ain't too far away, boy, neither. You're off to a real good start. Lord, for helping Jeff and showing him life's ways. The things he sees and hears and feels will guide him all his days.
nothing to say there, Jeff, but we're bound to take a look. Let's just hope we don't find no one. Whoever lived there, let's hope that they quit and moved on a long time ago. Once a man, and now it's just a cinder. He still deserves burying. Fetch my bedroll, will you? to ashes, dust to dust, I will be done, amen. It was bound to happen sometime, there was no telling him. You lived here? He was all the time drinking. Then he'd fall dead asleep with his head on the kitchen table, and I'd go off to bed. Your father? Yes, he knocked the lamp over this time. It was the fire woke me. I pulled and tugged at him, but there was no moving him. I doused him with water, then I ran up to Mama. And honey, suppose you take us to your mama. Mama's been gone this long time, but she was more alive to me than he ever was. I'm not real sorry he's gone. Well, do you go to anyone else? Anywhere? Mostly I stay here with her. Know what Mama called me? Hope. She said that's what I gave her. Well, Hope, looks like you better come along with us. Sure nothing to keep me here. We've been riding all day, Grandpa. Shouldn't uh, she have a bonnet on? Yes, yeah, she ought. What's a bonnet? Well, it sets on your head like a hat, only on women they call them bonnets. Never had one. Here, you try mine. That ain't gonna set just right, but it'll shade your eyes and keep the sun off. It don't set right. Can't see. <laughs> you should have seen yourself. You did look right funny. I'd rather see around. Never been anywhere. <laughs> well, let's get going. You can't sleep sitting up, Hope. Seems like I can't ready myself. You know, when I was a little boy, and I got scared and couldn't sleep, 
My grandpa used to tell me stories. I'm not scared. Well, anyway, you're not sleepy. Maybe I can remember one for you, okay? I'm not used to storying. I just gotta find my own way to sleep. You, uh, wanna say your prayers, Hope? I give that up. After Mama, seems like he don't hear me. Hotels across the street. I guess she ain't never seen a town before, huh, Grandpa? Well, she ain't seen much of a one now. Yes, sir. We'll have uh, three plates of what you got. Yeah, beef stew. And coffee. And we got no milk. Then she won't drink none. Always come in here with a kid. You couldn't be safer. <laughs> I'll remember that. You had to bring her? Yes, ma'am. Had to. You don't favor your daddy. She ain't got no daddy. She ain't got no mama. She don't favor whiskey. So you're just kind of wasting your time. I most never do that. I'm right sorry, honey. You smell good. Well, that's nice to hear, because I've tried. Where's your little girl? I've got no little girl. You want me? Someone's got to take me. Once you're nice and clean, the stew will taste better. I had some. It needs to taste better. You've got a nice big room to live in. Mm-hmm. You've got a daddy? No daddy. There's a slew of men downstairs. Well, whatever they are, they aren't my daddies. I've got no one except me. And sometimes that gets kind of crowded. Sure is a nice big room. It wouldn't be right. You need a mama sure enough and a daddy and a home. And I'm going to hope awful hard you find them. Well, come on and look at
at you. You washed up mighty pretty. You best go down to your menfolk or... Well, I think I'll stole off with you. No, they won't. It just wouldn't work. I guess I can't make you see that now. But someday you'll understand. No, wouldn't know where to say. Folks around here that want kids, got them. I sure feel mighty sorry for her. Yeah, well, I'm getting some sorry for us, too. Oh, Grandpa, will you tell me what we'll do with her? Of course, I feel for the little tyke, but we can't keep her. She's a little keen on that doll in the window there. I expect she is. Well, I'm gonna buy it. Wait. Here. Well, no, I got money. Look, buy her a dress, too. That one's gonna dry up and blow off in it. Now, I, I don't know anything about dresses. Well, learn. Might be you'll have to know. What are you looking at, Hope? Nothing. Well, let's go in and buy it, huh? Look around. Be with you directly. Thanks. Just the right size, Hope. You aim I should keep it? She's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Come on. I wondered who would get that beautiful doll. Aren't you a lucky little girl? Wanna hold it? Well, I wouldn't take it from your arms a minute. It's nine yards of blue drilling to the tick, Mrs. Elliot. Nine yards for five kids. You can see I've held a few dolls of my own. Well, ma'am, could you, uh, could you help us? Well, if I can. Well, besides this here doll, she needs a dress. And, uh, I don't know much about that. You know I don't either. My kids never once had store-bought clothes. But it'll be fun to look. We just got a few over that table there. Men folks don't know anything about dresses. Oh, my, isn't that a fright? <laughs> isn't that fierce? Oh, but now, this one's better. Oh, yes, that's right, pretty child. We like it, don't we? Yes, ma'am. You're going to make this dress look mighty nice. Well, you just sold a dress, and you just bought it. I sure am obliged, ma'am. We had fun, didn't we? Yes, ma'am. People here are, um, well, rather serene, you might say. Yeah, well, I've I seen your room today. It's, it's a nice room and a nice bed in it and all. Miss Phoebe, any other boarders have children here? I should say not. Well, that is to say that most of them are older and childless. I've never had a child before. <laughs> of course I haven't, but uh, when Mr. Sonnet told me about hope, my heart went out to her. 
Miss Phoebe wants you to stay with her a lot, Hope. She'd be right glad to have you. We'll become fast friends, you and I. I think we'd all like to see Hope's room, Miss Phoebe. Of course we would. After all, this is going to be our home. I'd keep a civil tongue in my head if that was you. It is a dear room, isn't it, Hope? Yes, ma'am. Oh, you should say, yes, Miss Phoebe. Yes, Miss Phoebe. And you keep it nice and clean and orderly. Thank you. Me and Jeff will run along to the hotel now, but we'll be here first thing in the morning to say goodbye. Good night, Hope. Poker boy. You just ain't got the face for it. so much as a by your leave. I offered that ungrateful child a home, companionship, care, and... But you saw her room? Nice room. A dear room, in a quiet, genteel home. But I'll tell you this, I'll never be put upon that way again. Pitiful, homeless orphan indeed. I sure can't figure where she ran off to. I don't care where she went, or where she is now. Just understand me, if you do find her, don't dare bring her back to me. I, I very nearly opened my heart to that child. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Jim. Do you suppose she got born that way, just kind of worked up to it? No, that'd be a life's work. Hope. Now, she wouldn't run all the way back to where we found her now, would she? I'll bet I know where she is. I saw her smile. Just once. Well, how'd you know about this? Mrs. Elliot helped us buy Hope's dress yesterday. <laughs> Hope never took her eyes off of her one time. And when she left, Hope watched her and her kids all the way out of town. <laughs> sure is a pass of kids, ain't it? <laughs> Happy kids. I hope you haven't worried. I wasn't right sure how to find you. Oh, I just hoped she'd found you. Middle of the night, bless her heart. Has she told you about herself, ma'am? Well, we know she's all alone and full of need. Joe and me, uh, I guess you can tell we love kids. And we've been lucky. We've got nice ones. But you got plenty of your own. Well, one more nice one won't hurt a bit. Look at them. They none of them know they just met last night. You're a good woman, ma'am. I'm a lucky one. Love, work, laughter. What else is there? I won't mind remembering her this way. Dear Lord, your help and mercy found that home. 
we show your will be done. Keep watch and guide her growing years. Her life has just begun. A lot of gunfire. Sounds like it's coming from that direction. Yeah, I thought I hit it back yonder there. But I weren't sure. It sounds like a full-fledged war just started. Maybe. Well, listen to it, Grandpa. Well, there's no maybe in that. It's bound to be an Indian war. <laughs> Nary a doubt in your mind, is there, Jeff? No, sir. And I ain't been as flat-footed sure since I was a young'un. You're saying that's not a war? There's something extra in the roar of them guns, I don't know. I'm gonna hope it ain't another engine war. I had my belly full of them. Seem to be letting up, Grandpa. Yeah, stopping for dinner too, likely. It's a peculiar thing, hearing that sound, knowing it's killing. I don't know nothing about war. Nothing to recommend it, Jim. Good afternoon to you. Howdy. I got a whiff of your coffee down the trail. I, I decided to come make friends with you. Howdy, friend. <laughs> Kit Torrey. All right, Jeff Sonnet. This is my grandpa. Hey, yes, sir, Mr. Sonnet. Where'd you get the name of Kit? Well, the story goes that my mama was in love with Mr. Carson, but uh, she married Mr. Torrey. Then I come along and, uh, well, uh, he run off. Am I going to get some of that coffee? Sure. I could sure go the beans, too. Well, help yourself. <laughs> I usually carry this. Most people I run into fill it up. <laughs> yeah. Folks take good care of you, do they? Yes, sir, most times. Only now I'm gonna get me a good job and do my own taking care. What kind of a job? That kind. I'm on my way to Fort Laramie to join up. <laughs> oh, you want to be a cavalry trooper, do you? Do you know how much it pays? <laughs> well, I got a good ID. Thirteen dollars a month, that's how much. And all you can eat and, and a bed and, and all you need for shooting engines. And you tell me a better life than that. Now you get the wrong slant on the army, son. You don't fight engines every day. So you shine your boots and ride parade. There's always something going on. Oh, no, boy. There's months and months of doing nothing. Too much weather. Cold, snow, wind, that's winter. And heat, dust, and wind, that's summer. And no matter what, you try to keep the peace. Well, there's lots of fighting. I heard that. Oh, you fight, sure. Scurvy, Qatar, and smallpox. And sometimes, but not very often, you fight Indians. That roar? That ain't smallpox, Mr. Sonnet. I've been listening to it all morning. And I know that sound now. It's got nothing to do with the Army fighting Indians. It's got nothing to do with the Army at all. He knows what he's about. I asked if you did. As long as Grandpa knows, I don't have to. Well, there's your war. That's a mighty big something. Buffalo, Grandpa? It was.
Never seen one dressed out that way. You call that dressed out? It's shot. Skin, sure. But the rest is left to rot. I guess the engines got what they wanted. They sure left a powerful lot to waste. That's just the beginning. They just leave them like that? They do. Sure are gonna have some fat buzzards around here. Yeah, but if we don't shake a leg, that's just what we'll have. Indian agencies between here and Fort Laramie. We we'll ride there. What for? To get help to carry this meat to them. I'd sooner leave it for the buzzards. Well, you got a choice, Kit. Jeff ain't. Not as long as he rides with me. I'd still like to understand, Grandpa. Then try understanding this. Injuns use all the buffalo, every shred of it, from its horns to its chips. Never was an engine born that'd leave him that way. I, I hoped you was the troopers. The engine agent. Yes. Yes, I am. Only don't bring me no more trouble. I got a plenty. Well, you got a good sized wagon. I might bring you some help. Shh. You hear that? Well, I don't hear anything. Of course not. They're being quiet now. Well, you never know why, nor for how long. Engines? Of course, engines. What ails them? They're restless. They've been acting this way ever since we had to cut back on their rations. One minute, they're milling around, mumbling that gibberish they talk. Or else just standing there in groups, staring over here at my quarters. Then the first thing you know, they disappear into their teepees and powwow, or whatever it is they do in there. They're hungry. Well, does that have to make them restless? Well, it'd make me restless. Ah, uh, there's got to be something more than just being hungry. You give me that wagon, we'll find out if it is. There's buffalo meat laying in a waste a few miles yonder that'll do fine for jerky and pemmican. <laughs> what the devil does this mean? Why, I can't give you no wagon. I don't even know who you are. My name's Will Sonnet. Why, if you was my own mother. Well, I'm glad I ain't. <sighs> Look. There's ways of doing things, orders, forms, requisition. That meat will spoil, and them engines need the food. That's requisition enough. Well, when the troopers come, that'll be time enough. They'll know what to do. They're used to army ways. Though where they are, I'll never know. I telegraphed for them yesterday. Yeah, because the engines was hungry? Because they are restless. Believe me, there is a right way to do things. Yeah, a right way in your way. <laughs> Sonnet? Uh, oh, the road straight ahead will take you to Fort Laramie. Yes, sir. Except I've almost never seen a town before. I thought I'd pass some time here. Well, it's your time, Kit. Yeah, we'll be yonder there at the stable, dickering for a wagon. How about your time, Jeff? <laughs> well, I've been to town before. <laughs> <laughs> Come to look or buy? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that buy anything? <laughs> look what you got. Thanks. Mmm. That ain't sweet a bit. 
We're all sold out of sweet beer. That buys two, don't it? He'll get them when you get that hook away. I like it when folks understand things clear. <laughs> That's a new one on me. One of my best friends is here. And this one completes the family. That's a funny kind of family. Just the way of calling it, boy. Families take care of each other. Well, me and these fellas, we take good care of each other. Much better than five cent beer. <laughs> Won't be long I can buy what I want. How's that? I'm joining the army at Fort Laramie. Men get rich in the army all the time. Well, they, they pay a lot more than I'm used to. I was hoping that you'd need work, strapping boy like you. I was hoping that you'd join the family. I still don't know what those things do. Eh, tools of the trade, boy. I guide them just so. But these fellas have skin more buffalo in a day. Any pair of knives around. So. And. So. And that quick. I made another 50 cents. That's fast money. $25 a day. It's faster if you work in pairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Takes practice, boy. I can see that. But while you're learning, you could earn more in a week than army pay in a month. You talking about me making that kind of money? Just you and me here, boy. Yeah. Barky, bring me and my friend here a glass of your fine whiskey. The best you got. No more nickel beer, huh? I sure don't belong in a good life. We go quality all the way. Hey, I keep it. Get anything with money. Just the beginning. Lots of fine things you never tried before. <coughs> like skin and buffalo, boy. Takes practice. Mr. Gilby. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Oh, I never been so glad to see anybody in all my life. Well, I see you got your wagon. We got it. You know these men? No. You know we were here. Tell him. Oh, well, yes, they was here before. Three of them wanted me to give them a wagon. Well, now, Lieutenant, you know I can't authorize no wagon, not even for the promise of buffalo meat. But when you ask me, do I know them? I'm sorry, I... mister. These are mighty sorry times, Lieutenant. The buffalo hunters are out there slaughtering, and we're sitting here being sorry. You hear good, do you? Good. Biggest herd I ever seen was along the bottom lands of the powder. You make that out from here? Powder, yes. Oh, man. Good ear. Engine. Big mouth. Sergeant Conrad. Yes, sir. Post two men to help Mr. Gilby unload and distribute the meat. Yes, sir. We'll need Indian help, too, Charlie. Get the best men you can to man the wagon. 
Fine mounts for the rest. I can't order you to come with us. Can't order me not to, neither. No. I start something, Lieutenant. I most generally finish it. No brag, just fact. Like you said, hundreds. Buffalo? Just kill. Kill. They never quit. I had to run. I had to. Stay with them, Jeff. Oh. Oh. Just ease back now. I'll tend your wounds. I'd never run from a fight. I'd never. But there were no fight to it. It was just a lot of dying. Just, just an awful lot of dying. Hunter, you got renegades on your side, too. Nothing left. Just in the men who killed him. No warning. Savages. Down from the hills. Where was army when white men needed you? Did. Hmm. Might have said easier if any of this made sense. Now, this man broke the law. Army and territory law against the wanton destruction of the buffalo. Yeah, and he got killed by lawbreakers. Renegade engines, breaking treaties. And we don't have wagons enough to carry this where it's needed. It don't make sense, but we can pray it never happens just this way again. Good to your right. Two guns. One thing, it ain't men laying dead by the hundreds down there. You work pretty good for Big Mouth Engine. Charlie, good engine. How come you ain't up there with them? Peace. Charlie want peace. They work. No fight, no kill. Yeah, it's got to begin like this. You and me, one red man, one white man, working together. Good ear, big mouth. It says they'll have me swore in by nightfall. <laughs> Thirteen dollars a month, and all you need for shooting engines. I know. I know. I've got a lot to learn. I'm knowing it. That's half the learning, Grandpa says. <laughs> I'm willing. And <laughs> that's about the rest of it. I'd just like to say I, I'm obliged to you both. Keep thinking about me here, in the Army, keeping the peace. Takes men to do that, kid. Strong men, willing men. 
Like Lieutenant Elder here, Charlie there. Starts with them, keeping the law and keeping the peace. That's the way to stop the killing forever. your love light the souls of men. Make them see what's right and what's wrong. Let all your creatures live in peace. Let this broad land stay strong. Meet my grandfather, Will Sonnet. No log in it, friend. Just have a seat. Oh, no, no, I mean, has he showed up yet? Not unless that's him. No, he, he's a tall man, older. Haven't seen him. Well, maybe send a message, a telegram or something for Jeff Sonnet? No, nothing. Funny. I figured he'd be here way ahead of me. You see, we split up about 60 miles south. Not a fact. Yeah, so as he could cover the country to the east while I hunted around to the west. Folks gave us two different leads. We didn't know which one to take, so... But we're trying to find my pa, Jim Sonnet. Look, uh, maybe your grandpa went to get himself a room first before coming here. Well, maybe he did. Is there a hotel? Mm -hmm. End of the street. Yeah, but there's also rooms over the saloon. Most of the fellas check in there. It's closer to the action. <laughs> I'll check the hotel first. Thank you, mister. Are you sure he said Jim Sonnet was his father? Major, I got good ears. I ain't like him. And I heard some very interesting news about a change in tomorrow's stage to Fort Henry. I'll save that. Right now, the boy's more important. I wish we'd have known this yesterday when Jim turned down our little proposition. But if he really is Jim Sonnet's son, we'll make up on it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Got all flavors. Oh, nothing, thanks. We're just wondering if a man named Sonnet took a room here. Nope. Might try the hotel. Well, I just did. Thanks anyway, mister. All right. Pardon me, young man. But your name wouldn't happen to be Sonnet. Hmm? Well, that's right. Jeff Sonnet. <laughs> I thought so. And I happened to see you out in the street a while ago. I spotted the resemblance, but I couldn't, couldn't quite place it. Well, resemblance to who? Why, to Jim Sonnet. You must be the son he keeps bragging about. You mean you'd know my father, mister? <laughs> Major Cross, later the Union Army, 22nd Cavalry. <laughs> That's the same outfit Paul was in. Don't I know it's on? Yes. Best soldier in my company. We fought shoulder to shoulder through many a battle. Well, it's good to meet you, Major Cross. Well, tell me, have you heard anything from Paul since the war? Heard from him, son. I see him every day. We're in business together. I expect to be back at headquarters with him tomorrow. say I saved Jim Sonnet's life in that skirmish. Then there was a time at Shiloh that I really... Major, pardon me, but uh, I'm awful anxious to hear how he's doing now. Oh, of course you are, son. Well, like I said, we're in business together. We're partners in a gold mine up in the Medora Range. Looks like it's going to pay off big real soon. That's right. In fact, uh, we expect to hit the mother load about uh, noon, day after tomorrow. You talk too much, Chihuahua. You want to start another gold rush? I'll go get the horses ready. It's time we started back. Yes, sir, Major. Sir? Major, could you hold off going back just a little longer? 
Grandpa should be here any time now. Oh, no, I think your grandpa's been delayed somehow. They gotta leave him a note saying that you're gone after your pa and come along with us. It's a hard spot to find without a guide. Sure, he won't mind waiting around here for me to come back with Paul. <laughs> Old army habit of mine. I still carry my field diary with me. <laughs> well, don't mind, Charlie. Watching somebody write fascinates him. <laughs> Depot. I'll deliver for you. You better get your horse ready. Okay, thanks, Major. I'll hustle right along. Well, Charlie, looks like Jim's son is going to be a whole lot easier to handle now. If he's got any interest in his son's future at all. Follow the creek for a little way now. It's easier than that loose rebel directly cross. Looks like we're trying to cover our trail in case anybody's following. Uh, when you got a gold mine that may be worth a fortune, that's not a bad idea. Resume march. Let's go. Mind if I sit with you? Sit. Name's Sonnet. We're Sonnet. Might as well get used to socializing with leathered up old critters my own age. Well, now, I'd say there's a little good left in us old critters yet. What well, little good I have me just left town on a fast horse. We'll rest the horses here, son. How much farther to the mine? Just beyond that next ridge. Won't be long until you'll be seeing your father again. I want you to grab him just before we sight the mine shack. You want Charlie knife him? No. No, no killing. Well, Major, he ain't gonna grab easy. I think Charlie's got a good idea. Don't be a fool. We have to keep him alive so Jim can see him. After that, who knows? But now we need him alive. Maybe we could team up and stake us a claim to work somewhere. Oh, no more than grandson bid him to think he'd take off without saying goodbye. Something's wrong. Something's happened to him. Now, Will, you're just guessing. I ain't guessing. I'm feeling I'm knowing. Look 
into it. What are we stopping for now? Rest the horses. Well, we just rested the horses a while ago. It's my old army training again. I value my animal. I take good care of him. Well, but you said the mine shack was just over this ridge. We'll rest the horses here until I give the order to advance, son. Well, my pa always believed in taking good care of his animal, too. Yes, I know. Well, I reckon you were with him at the Battle of Vicksburg when his horse broke its leg and he had to shoot it. It was a very bad moment for Jim. Yeah, I've heard it said that... Uh, he had the prettiest black mare that you'd ever want to see. That was a beautiful animal. I don't think you were in the war with my paw together at all. What makes you say a thing like that, son? Because he never had a black mare, that's why. We've heard it said a hundred times that Paul rode a bay gelding all through the war. And it never broke its leg. <laughs> well, now, I guess I owe you an explanation, don't I? Well, maybe you haven't got a gold mine. Or well, maybe Paul's not waiting at that shack up there. He's there, all right. I'll see him shortly. Now, let me tell you why I may have been a little confused about the business of his horse. We were out here a few hours ago with three other fellas, headed north towards the Medora Range. Boy, was all excited. Said something about going to find his pa up at an old mine shack. Yeah, he must have got a lead on James. There was three others, you say? Peculiar lot. One right smart-looking dude, uh, Deep Indian, another fella. Much obliged. I'll head north and try to pick up their trail. I don't know why you brought me out here, but I reckon it wasn't to meet my pa. He'd never do business with you. Well, uh, I'm sure he soon will be. Will you aim to use me to force him into partnership with you? In a way. The Fort Henry payroll shipment is coming through near here tomorrow. I reckon I'll just part company with you here, Major. I'd like to oblige, but I need Jim Sonnet. So, uh, you'll come along with us. <laughs> that was a beautiful move. And I'd say you're almost as fast as Jim. But, uh, one thing spoils it. I'm afraid your gun is empty. <laughs> See, I badly need a smart man with a quick gun to pull this off. Now, your father's stubborn, but he's smart as they come, and he's faster than quick. Oh, uh, we could be rich by tomorrow. You're going to talk to my Paul. What's holding you? Timing, son. Proper timing wins the battle. Now, just before dawn, I'll send Chihuahua up to the cabin to tell him that you've joined up with us. And if Chihuahua tells it right, I dare say he'll ride when we hit the stage at noon. 
Yeah, he'll tell you to go jump. And I'm telling you to go jump. I won't ride along with you. Oh? <laughs> I think you will. Howdy, Will. Just passing by. Thought I'd poke my head in. Well, you come mighty near poking it in without a head. Sneaking up on a man in the night like that, making a banshee noise and all that business. It wasn't me, it was the mule. It ain't certain which of you is the biggest fool. Stableman said you was headed north. Figured you'd be well up in the Medoras by now. Young fella full of oats like you. <laughs> well, the trail ran out in this creek here right at sundown, and nothing I can do about it till daylight. Well, if you was to team up with me, a little thing like that wouldn't slow you down. I know all these trails blindfolded. Just about every mine shack up there. All right, we're teamed. Oh, say. That's right friendly of you, Will. Yes, sir, I'm sure glad I dropped by to... What about them mining shacks you just mentioned? Well, I'd say if them fellas you've been tracking was headed in this direction, they was probably making for Fred Cleaver's old shack. Can you find it at night? Like an owl. Then let's get going. Oh, wait a minute. Ain't you going to crack open a jug of something to celebrate our hitching up together? Now, you start leading the way to that shack or we'd just been unhitched. Doggone. I knowed I should have got it down in writing. Chihuahua's coming back now. Well, Major, Sonny just flat out called me a liar. Called you worse. Want me to go down the list? Never mind. Did you tell him his son's life is at stake? Yeah, I told him. That's when he called me a liar. He claims that his son is not within a thousand miles of here. He says he's out on a ranch somewhere, all safe and sound. And he says that whoever this kid is here, he just got you by the tail. Well, the boy wouldn't have come with us if he wasn't Jim Sonnet's son. Now, that's a bluff. So let Jim take a good look at you and see what he says. Well, he wouldn't know me. He hasn't seen me since I was little. Now start walking. Slow. Keep me cover. There's the shack. Jeff with a gun at his back. Close enough. Jim! I brought your son up here so he can see it's not a trick. Now, this is your son, Jim. If you're going to get stubborn, the next time you see him, he'll be laid off likewise.
right, Jeff? Paul was in that shack. Maybe. Now he's gone. He didn't leave anything. I guess he's not coming back. Well, he ain't like James to ever go back. Well, maybe we can catch up to him. Or maybe he'll wait for us. <laughs> we're a whole lot closer to him today than we was yesterday. And we were kind of like a family there for a while. All working together, fighting for one another. It felt good. Even, even when it was bad. You see how it is? I got a duty to my other partner to keep looking for our James. Sure, well. When I seed you going to action just now, I knowed I couldn't cut it with a young buck like you anyway. <laughs> Good luck to you. Like the book says, in thee, O Lord, Shall all families of the earth be blessed? turning on a slow fire. Yeah. It'd be almost like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what intonation is that? It's well, a turkey call. Turkey call? Yeah. It's a run for your life, turkey call. Any turkey heard that, he'd sure run for his life. <laughs> Look, you got to do it soft, like this. <laughs> All right, give it up. Slide them guns out here. Give it up, I said, or we're coming in. All right, keep moving. Right on down to the jail. Town's gonna be sorry for that. What are they, outlaws or something? Worse. They're riding for Harley Bass, and he ain't gonna like it. I'm <laughs> sure he sure ain't. Something I can do for you, gents? You'd be obliged to take one of them birds off in your hands. That is, if you're the man to see. I am, but they's all took. Got to deliver them this afternoon. Now, if you're passing through, which I figure you're doing, get west about five miles. There's some hills. And they're flocking free all over. You can't miss them. Sure beats eating anywhere's in this town. <laughs> well, appreciate knowing that. My pleasure. If you need some supplies. Oh, no, we got plenty. But we could use some information. We're looking for a man named James Sonnet. I reckon that's your business. He come through a while back, heading south. Well, that's Mexico. Just over the border a couple of miles. A settlement called Mesa. Ain't no place for you. Outlaws, thieves, gunmen, run by Harley Bass. He took over the whole town, drove everybody out. Folks say he's got an army down there, but no one dares get close enough to tell different. Sonnet was looking for it, probably figuring on falling in with him. Well, they're his kind, not yours. <laughs> James Sonnet is my son. I'm Will Sonnet. This here's his boy, Jeff. We thank you, sir. Sorry, Mr. Sonnet. Sure sorry. There ain't no turkeys that way. like he said. Hello? 
that must be it. Let's go. No, not together. You wait here. Well, now, what's the good of that? Well, you keep watch, and if I find your par and everything's all right, I'll wave you on in or I'll come back. But one way or the other, you just stay put here. What do you want here? I'm looking for James Sonnet. I'm his pa, Will Sonnet. That a fact? I only talk facts, mister. I heard he was here. Is he? Oh, you'd best come on in. We'll let you look for yourself. He was here. Now, get down. You go about your business. Pete, Jojo, come with me. Inside. Better see. Feel it. Nice balance. That's because it belongs to Will Sonnet. Well, now. All right, talk to me. I come after my son James. If he ain't here, uh, if he's buried out there, why, I got no more business. Finished clean enough. They tell me that Jim Sonner was about to pass his gun around. I guess he proved that when he was down here, huh? But then he told me you were even faster because you taught him. That may be. But which is it? Is James gone or is he one of them two out there? Well, what difference does it make? You don't see him around, do you? You figure you can talk plainer than that, considering. Considering what? Who you are, Ollie Bass. I reckon down here is about the only place you ain't wanted for something. That's why I'm staying down here. All of us. Including you, Mr. Sonnet. You see, I got a funny quirk. I don't like long noses poking around down here and then going back and telling what they seen. Less folks know about Mesa, the better I like it. Will you pick that up? Good. And come here peaceful like and I'll leave the same way. You just tell me about James. I thought I told you about him. Nobody rides in here and then just rides out again whenever they feel like it. Not alive, anyway. Now, what's it gonna be? I won't ride with scum. Is that final? It is. Hey, Harley. Rider coming. We'll see about that. Watch him. <laughs> Good He's just a wild kid. Hey, you want to back that up? Hold it. Where'd you come from, boy? Right here and there. What's the difference? 
This is Mesa, ain't it? That's right. You Harley Bass? Me? <laughs> now, what's so funny? I'm Bass. Oh, well, my name's Jeff Sinclair. I come to join up with you. Is that a fact? I ride good, Mr. Bass. I shoot good, too. Real good. And I'll prove it to any one of you who want to face up to me. Well, you just might have that chance. How about him? Well, now, just what do you mean? You know who that is? That's Will Sonnet. That'd really be a, a notch on that gun of yours. Hold on, now. I don't caught in the face of no boy. Is that a fact? Will you face this boy or ride with us? Now, you can take your pick, old man. You ain't scared to face Will Sonnet, are you? Scared? Why should I be scared? Jojo. Use my gun when you say, but not again, no boy. Well, what does that mean? I'm joining you. I'm backing down, son. You're a winner, boy. Right off, you're a winner. How about a drink on that? It's a good idea. We have a nice, friendly drink to seal the bargain. Yeah, a friendly drink. You too, boy. Sinclair. Jeff Sinclair. Not boy. The flies are coming. See to them. Well, you figure an hour to Villa Mesa, then another hour for sunset, huh? Well, you tell that old man that calls himself a sheriff, he better let my boys out of jail. Get them back here by sundown. What if they ain't, Mr. Bass? You just tell him that. Yeah, I knew you wasn't going to like it. I sure knew it. As for them sonnets... I'll take care of them. <laughs> Good thing I came along, Mr. Bass. They had you fooled, sure enough. Get moving. but to help you escape. Why? And why were you praying by them graves? Who's buried there? Not your son. The sons of my father, my brothers, they... they shamed us. Your sons? He does not understand. This was a good place, till Bas and his men came and drove the others away. It was our home. They took it. They forced us to... They forced me to... Well, you have seen for yourself. My brothers joined them. They said it was easier than to die for nothing. But they are dead. By the hand of Jim Sonnet. They say no one ever leaves here, but he did. He escaped as you must do now. With all that, you want to help us? You are good men. This I have seen. And the people in Villa Grande, they are good. They do not deserve to be treated in this...
Move, boy. Get one of them horses. I'll cover you. Go on. No back talk. <laughs> Drop it, Sonnet, or you're a dead man. Go after him. He ain't gonna get very far fleeting to death. Oh. You're lucky, old man. You're lucky I need you, or I'd have killed you. You know that? Falling off back a ways. Uh, we can't track him this time of night. Yeah, uh, well, Bass ain't gonna like it if we don't bring him back, I can tell you that. Well, how far do you think he can get wounded? More than likely he's dead by now. At least we got a chance at it. You think Bass will believe it? We tell it good. Now we saw him fall off in that deep canyon up ahead. We couldn't get to his body, right? All right. All right, let's go. I'll see that he fell and rolled into the rocks. Well, we couldn't get to him. But I'll tell you, Harley, he couldn't have lived. All right. Then we'll ride like we planned. You know, son, if you're a lucky man, you're lucky I need every gun I can get in Villa Grande. <coughs> Now, you use this gun right. I'll let you see your grandson when we get back. Where is he? Well, the boys took him down to the bunkhouse. Make sure he stays around while we're gone. You do understand his life's in your hands. Now, you help me get my boys out of jail, he'll live. But you make one mistake, he's dead. And you, don't you try to turn him loose while we're gone. I'll get all three of you. That'd bring me some pleasure. You stay here and take care of your daddy. Let's go. They're coming. What did I tell you? That's him on the left. Will Sonnet. Riding right along with him. That's a fool move. Wait. Can't gun him down. You've got a way to warn him. You'll do it, quick. Run, turkey. Hey! noise you made 
It's the sweetest sound I ever heard. <laughs> have done. My father and I thank you. And we will pray for you. Well, thanks ain't necessary, Miss Abby. But we can always use a lot of the other. It's yours again. Now you can make it back to that good place that it was. Home again. There are only the two of us now. Tell the others. The folks who lived here that it's safe to come back. Sure. Maybe some nice fellow will come along and before you know it... No. No. Too much has happened to me. I know what they have made me into. Abby. and won, but we'll forget and bless the day when our search for James is done. to the bright lights, fam. Anything as gay as this calls for champagne. Calls for it, but that's about all, huh? You've been with him again, ain't you? Hands off the arm, Wilk. Don't lie to me, I can always tell. Don't start with me again. I'm getting sick of it. Now, how many times do I have to tell you I haven't seen Jim in five years? Hey, Keo, we're going to have ourselves a show. I've seen a hoax like that grab women before. No, not this one. He's wild. I've seen him in towns all over. You never heard tell of Big Wilt? Never even once. Listen, Keo. I could go to him right now, say just one thing. He near shoot this town up. I got four bits here that says you can't. I'd stay right loose if I was you. Here, put both hands to it. You never lie to me again. I'll break your neck. Hey, Wilt, he just rode in. Jim Sonnet, tying up across the street right now. Jim Sonnet. Yeah, well, you killed him again. How many times is this now? About ten?
He's around. Now get him. We heard the shots. You got trouble here, Sheriff? It's all over for the time being. Dad, it's over. A thing like that could wake a man up. <laughs> sure could. I wonder what caused it. Well, that big devil likely saw his own reflection in the glass here. Most anyone would want to get rid of a sight like that. <laughs> You got a room left in here with the window still in it? Oh, he was firing straight away. The rooms are all upstairs. What was all the commotion about? Oh, Big Will claimed he was firing on Jim Sonnet. And was he? W and J Sonnet? Oh, he asked, was he firing on James Sonnet? Why, uh, no, no. Uh, Jim Sonnet's not around here. Then you're just edgy by nature, huh? Your name, that's all. Wilkes been gunning for Jim Sonnet for years, and he'll only be in jail for one night for shooting up the window. Well, we're sure of one good night's sleep. What is this unlocked? Uh, room 14, up the stairs. Did you see the horse's stable, would you, Jeff? Yes, sir. I'd steer clear of Wilkes, mister. I really would. Well, laying low and steering clear, that just ain't our way. The last time I'm gonna set you free, Wilkes, Coffee. Help yourself. I fired them all. I heard you. And you killed the front window of the hotel. Who me is there? Jim Sonnet just tying up. He's gonna have to pay the hotel for that window, Wilk. Sure. Then, clear out of my town. And don't you never come back. You ain't got no idea what it's like. It don't ever sleep. It don't ever let up on me. But you're shooting at shadows, Wilk. Jim Sonnet's nowhere around here. Eighteen years old, my brother was, when Jim Sonnet rode him down and killed him. And I wasn't there to fight for his life. You don't know it was Jim Sonnet. You never saw it happen. You think I see anything else? Every time I close my eyes, every time I open them again. I see what he done. I'll take it easy, Wilk. Easy? I'll tell you when I'll rest easy. When I kill Jim Sonnet. And he's around. He's around. You think I wouldn't know he was here? I think you wouldn't say you was here. How much for the window? Uh, five dollars. Uh, five. And you can just leave it over there on the desk. So don't make it so to me. He's his father. I'm his son. You gotta believe that. <laughs> Let's not start by telling me what I gotta believe. Now, where do you want to start? With Jim never once mentioning either one of you. Not his father, not his son. Do you know where he is? Maybe you're like Wilk. Maybe you just want him dead. Look at him. Does he look like a killer? And look at him. You look like men. An old one and a young one. Just men. And you can't tell what they're like by looking. I know that better than most. Well, we're wasting our time, boy. You know, Wilk? I saw him once, that's all. He's fit to kill anything named Sonnet. If that's who we are. If it is.
Can't you tell that we're who we say? Women are gonna believe you, boy. They're gonna look in those big, deep eyes, and they're gonna believe you. And get lost. I wish you'd believe me. I don't know where Jim is. But he was decent. And gentle. And, uh, I'm not much used to that. I think you could be Jim's son. And I hope you find him. But don't stay here, because you'll get killed, sure. You didn't find out a thing, did you? I didn't find out where he is. Stops by and leaves his calling card, does he? I don't even have to see him to know. It's like when the wind quits and things get still, the way it is just before a cyclone. Ain't much of a wind out there. There's enough. Well, given the wind it's due, the boy and me heard he was here. And that big fella you brought in last night. Wilk. Yeah, Wilk. Seems like he come here special to kill James. He's been gunning for him for five years. Why? Claims Jim Sonnet killed his kid brother. Oh, I don't believe that. No, sir. Well, Wilk thinks he did, and he won't rest until he finds Jim and kills him for it. Well, it might be you'd understand. We'd like to keep him from it. Now, look. Let's us have a real understanding. I like a quiet town. With no Wilks and no Sonnets. I already ordered Wilk out of here. Well, there's nothing to keep us here, Sheriff. But seeing our only crime was asking a few questions, when we go, it'll be our ID. He ain't here. He's somewhere else. I'm getting sick of hearing it. Grandpa, look. I'll settle with the hotel. You bring the horse around. Well, you said he might be the one to lead us to my father. I said if he was, we'd best get there first. Now, go on. But stone cold. Bedroom, Grandpa, both empty. Is it Wilk? Yeah, and if there's no one here, I sure don't know why he's hurrying so. It's about time. No way you could have beat me here. No way. 
You ain't fooling me. I know who you are. None. We know who you are. So we don't have to stand in no ceremony. I wasn't sure a fan told me the straight of it till I seen you two here. He's in there. Now you're here. I see you're here and you're a dirty, cringing coward if you don't show yourself. Oh. It ain't that way at all. running out here to warn him. Now you're going to tell me where he is. If James had been here, the three of us would be gone by now. Him, the boy, and me. You come out here same as me. Because you heard he is here. We're here because you're here. No. Fan told me just like she told you. And Fan don't dare tell me wrong. She said she didn't know where he is. Where who is? My father. Your father. Do you know what he done? I know what you say he did. Younger than you, my brother was. And your father rode him down and killed him. We just don't believe that. No, sir, we don't. He's coming back. And I ain't about to get cornered by three sonnets. Nobody's got you cornered, Wilk. And none of us here is holding you here. It don't make no difference about you, old man. But the sonnet line's gonna end right here. I didn't fire. It came from over yonder. He's dead. I'd have taken my chances with Wilk. I've lied to him before. He might have killed you for this lie. What have I got to live a long life for? But when I found out that you'd followed him, well, I knew that one of you or both of you would have to die for sure. This cabin is yours? Yeah. I get out here sometimes. Sometimes when Jim's here. He was here about a month ago. Right here with me. And now? Now I don't know where he is. That's the truth. But he might come back someday. 
And I'd like that. Honest. I'd like that. Our dogs will get it coming. I can wish it hadn't been Fan. Well, yeah, someone was going to die out there, Sheriff. Wilk had his gun drawn on Jeff here. If she hadn't killed him, I would have. Sheriff, I want to help her all I can. Well, so do I, son. Judge a little freer, likely. There's a long line of folks who swear all she killed was a mad dog. All right if I go see her? Go ahead. Don't mind if I don't ask in. <laughs> no, ma'am. I just came to thank you, to wish you well. Decent and gentle, just like your daddy. I have uh, been thinking on Jim a lot. If you find him, say hello from Fan. Sure. And goodbye. Well, him being a family man and all, I think it's best. Lord, we've seen a lot of sadness here as we live this last long week. Now we start again, with your help, to find the man we seek. Dead town, ain't it? Mighty scared town. You seen us coming. Took to the brush like a covey of quail. Yeah, I can see the pin feathers sticking through the brush. Get your feet on the ground slow and easy. And cover me from the rear when I move. Feet. Well, look, we weren't fixing to shoot you. A man aiming a gun ain't fixing to pitch horseshoes. Get the others out here in the open. Pete, Carlos, come on out. It's a mighty peculiar way you got a welcoming folks to this town. We were only trying to protect ourselves. We thought that, well, when we saw you coming in, we. We figured maybe you were the man that Ben Adams sent for. I never heard of Ben Adams. Oh. Well, Ben is the biggest cattleman around here. Oh, I'm, I'm Pat Murphy. I'm a sheepman, and these are my two herders, Pete and Carlos. I'm sorry. I, I guess we made a mistake about you. Cattle and sheep, huh? Make oil and water. They ain't never been known to mix real good. There's plenty of room here for both of us. Senor Adams, he burns our sheds and our grasslands. He poisons our water holes. Uh, now he's hired a professional gun to come in. Frank Corbett. Frank Corbett from Texas? That's him. Our Corbett's gunned down more men than some armies. This fellow Adams is buying himself a whole lot of trouble. You're wrong there, mister. I've had all the troubles I'm going to take from mutton punchers. So have these other cattlemen. We are going to end it quick. By hiring yourselves a gunfighter? That's our business. That's a mighty poor business to get into. 
It ain't healthy around here for lamb lickers. It ain't even smart to ride through this town with a wool shirt on. Now there's a fella who's going to make this a good country for the cattlemen, even if he gets them all killed doing it. If he wants to hire a Frank Corbett, I can match him. You really want a war? You hired yourself a killer too? Should be here maybe tomorrow. Ain't exactly a hired killer either. I could only afford to give him expenses. An old friend I rode with in the army. But I'll match him against Frank Corbett any day. Not many that good. This fella is. Maybe you heard him. Name of Jim Sonnet. <laughs> Men who we were. If Paul's that good a friend. We ain't that sure about nothing yet, Jeff. Best we find out how far this is gonna go. On the bay, gents. Two beers will be fine. I'm glad to see that you don't smell like sheep yet. I'll buy them beers if it's going to stay that way. Mister, we can buy our own if it's all the same to you. Do it yourself. Just thought you might be interested in joining up with the healthy side. Jim Sonnet's no match for Frank Corbett, and them sheep men are going to find it out the hard way. So it's true, is it? They really got this fellow Jim Sonnet? That's the boast they made, but they just bit off a little more than they can chew. Well, mister, we were just passing through. And from what you say, we'd be wise to keep on going. You might be at that. Come on, Jeff. Let's see how wise we are. Hey, boss. Oh. Hey, Daddy. My name's Will Sonnet. Sonnet? This here's James's boy, Jeff. Well, howdy, but I don't understand. Why didn't you tell us that? <laughs> well, we wanted to make sure, Mr. Murphy. And uh, we'd like to help now. Paul would like that. So if it's all right with you, we ride along? All right, let's go. <laughs> We've been looking for my Paul quite a long time now, Mr. Murphy. Seems like we're always just one jump behind him. <laughs> this is the first time we ever beat him to a place, and all we got to do now is just sit back and wait for him. Where's James coming from? Hmm? You from the north? I figure he'll be riding in through Pinon Pass. Uh, I wish he wasn't coming on this kind of business, though. I don't reckon that'll spoil the pleasure he'll get out of seeing his growed up son. Papa, he's going to be glad to see you, too. <laughs> yeah, you pawn me. He was always better at saying so long than howdy. But I guess maybe 20 years would change the both of us, might. You know, it's going to seem uh, kind of funny meeting him. Seems how you've been like my own Paul ever since I can recall. Yeah, I reckon I've been a better part of you than I was to James. Or he wouldn't have lit out before he was water broke. Now, wait a minute. Jim is a good man, Mr. Sonnet. Well, if it's all right with you, we'll just stay here till James comes. Oh, sure, sure. I'd be right proud to have you. We'll earn our keep. Even if it is hurting woolies. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the herders can handle that. Uh, see, listen, you, you could ride into town and try and rustle up some grub. You know, Adams has got that town so scared that they won't sell to us. We're running pretty low here. That sounds like trouble. You've had plenty of warnings to move out, Murphy. This is the last time I'm telling you and the rest of those scab herders to get. You got 24 hours, you and your friends. Now look here, Adams. I told you before, this is a big country. There's plenty of room for all of us here. Things are going to get mighty crowded when Frank Corbett gets here. 
You think so, huh? Well, I figure things are going to open up some when Jim Sonnet gets here. Too wise. We've been told too often that we're not welcome here. Well, they'll sell the wash. Stay handy with that rig. Yeah. That's a lot of grub for just two men. Well, this is just my morning feed. The boys already ate. Got a customer for you, Clyde. Ira Tucker. We put him in your place across the street. Found him shot in the back in his wagon out on the north road. Ira Tucker. The most likable and peaceable man in these parts. Why did anybody want to shoot him? And in the back? He was a cattleman. That's all that counts with mutton punchers. Well, I'm going to give him my best undertaking job. Well, hold on, Clyde. You got a law job to do first. Before Ira died, he told us who bushwhacked him. Well, I'll round up a posse. All you men are deputized. Every man in the county is deputized. And don't bother to bring the skunk in. Shoot him on sight. Who was it, Ben? The scab herder's hired gun, Jim Sonnet. Hold on now. You got your order filled, mister. Stores closing up for law business. You're making a mistake. These two saddle tramps tied in with the sheep herders. Don't waste no time on them. You'll be wasting time going after James Sonnet. He didn't do this killing. What do you know about Jim Sonnet? No Sonnet ever put a hole in a man that's looking the other way. He can do it just as easy, eye to eye. I'll take the word of a dying friend over a stranger. Just before he died, Ira told us he got a good look at his killer. Said he knew him. And it was Jim's sonnet. Now let's go get him, boys. What do you suppose shot that fella, Grandpa? I don't know, but it's plain to see why Adams claims James done it. Now every man in the country's got a license to gun him down on sight without warning. We gotta get out there and warn Paul before he gets here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Murphy said he'd be riding in from the north. It's in Pignon Pass. We best get this food back to camp. You go on ahead. I have to stop by the mill and pick up some flour. By luck, it is run by a cousin of mine, eh? Besides, it might be better for all if we do not go together. Get up there! Round up slow, boy, and ride out easy. We don't want to attract any more attention. We have to. Penguin, Fargo. I'll get the rest of the men spread out around the country. You two ride after the kid and the old man. Better take Joe with you. They seem to have a special interest in Jim's sonnet. It just might lead you to him. A good idea if we uh, got to sign it before any of the others. If you find them, take care of them. And then take care of those two, so we don't have a whole new batch of questions to answer. Fellas eating our dust back there. I spot him a ways back. I don't see anybody. 
course you don't. They stop when we stop. They stay out of sight. That's how I know they're following us. You think some of Adam's men followed us from town? Likely. And we're leading them right to your paw. Well, we got to get back to the sheep camp, then. If we do an about face like that, they'll figure we've seen them. And they'll figure we was headed to meet James. Well, what do we do, then? Try and jump them someplace? Nah, they're too smart to come that close. No, I reckon we'll do like the old she-wolf does when she's got a den full of young ones and the hunters is tracking it. We'll make it real easy for them to follow us. Uh, I would lead them away from Pignon Pass. Away from Paul. Yeah, that's the best we can do from right now. I sure hope he makes it to that sheep camp. With the men after him, he's liable to ride straight into a bullet. Yeah, we well, come on. Jim Sonnet. Come on out, Jim. I'm clean. Hello, Corbett. Howdy, Jim. Long time since Texas. Business must have been bad. Your aim's pretty rusty. Now, Jim, you know better than that. You tried to kill me and miss. That's going to ruin your reputation. I never try. I always do it. If I'd wanted to get you, I could have done it real easy. What stops you? Just want to talk to you? We haven't got a whole lot to talk about. Well, I'll talk. And you listen. But holster up so I can get at it more friendly-like. I figure I know what you got to say. Cowman hired your gun. I heard you were here for the same kind of business, only for the uh, mutton boys. There's one difference. I'm doing it for a friend. You're doing it for a dollar. Oh, a lot of dollars, Jim. I don't figure your sheep herder friend was quite so generous, but out of professional courtesy and to make my job a little easier. I'm willing to cut you in for a half at my advance if you'll just wheel right around and head back where you came from. I got a better proposition. Why don't you wheel around and ride back and it won't cost you a cent? Oh, Jim, you ain't no sheep lover. Why you want to ride herd on a string of walking underwear? The odds are way against you. Now, I know you're real good. But you ain't that good. Maybe nobody will notice. You staying? I'm staying. Mr. Murphy here? Yes, sir. He's inside. Any sign of James yet? No. Seems like he's kind of overdue, doesn't it? Well, Adam says he's already here. Claims he shot a cattleman in the back. What? Oh, no, no, not Jim. It's likely a trick of Adam's, but he's got the whole country riled up and against James and they're out gunning for him. We rode out to Pignon Pass to try and warn for but a couple of Adam's men trailed us. Yeah, we've been leading them on a nice pleasure tour. Reckon we covered most of the scenic spots in this here territory. Was Carlos with you? No, he had to go to the mill for flour. If only there was some way to warn Paul. Your pa will get here, boy. I reckon the good Lord meant us to meet up with him this time, or he wouldn't have sent us here straight as an arrow. Time to spare. Where's Jim Sonnet? Now that's a darn shame. You know, I was just fixing to ask you the same question. Thought maybe you'd seen him in your travels around. You've been leading us on a wild goose chase, old man. 
<laughs> Don't see no hauntas around your necks. Hard to figure how we'd be leading you. We followed you all over Tarnation to nowhere. Well, sir, following and leading is two different things. Mighty different. Now, I've seen dumb critters follow a stretch of barbed wire fence. Well, you're real and... smart, old man. Real smart. But we'll find Jim Sonnet. And you will all be following these woolies out of here. Yep. Beginning to look like we picked the right side. You know that Adam's men kills 15 sheep and they cripple some others? I guess we'll be eating mutton for quite a few nights. I sure wish Paul would get here. Mm -hmm. Should be here by now. No, I don't like it. Well, if you don't ride in by sundown, we'll go out again. Alto! 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 Senores! Senores! Ya llegó el pistolero! Simmer down, simmer down, you're talking like a scattergun. Si, senor. Right after you left the town, this man rides in. He was very bad looking, dressed all in a long robe like El Diablo. He goes to Senor Adams and I hear him say his name is Frank Corbett. So he's here. We expected him to come, you know, Carlos. See, si, senor, but that's not all. When this Frank Corbett rides into town, he was leading your son's horse, senor. How do they know it was James's horse? Forgive me, senor. Your son was tied across the back of it. Dead. Break is a town scared witless. Just waiting for a real shooting war to bust loose. Cattlemen and sheepmen. Both stubborn, both ready to fight for the land. And both waiting for their hired gunslingers to get here. The cattlemen hide themselves a real killer. Frank Corbett. But the fella that's coming to back up the sheepmen is... Jim Sonnet. Let's go after him. Right after you left the town, this man rides in. He was very bad looking. He goes to Senor Adams and I hear him say his name is Frank Corbett. That's not all. He was leading your son's horse, Senor. How did they know it was James's horse? Forgive me, but your son was tied across the back of it. Dead. <laughs> Just itching to ride into town, get yourself tailed, ain't you? You might as well let me go. Because I'm gonna get the man that shot my paw. I ain't gonna let you go, boy. Leastwise, not till you gentle down some. Frank Corbett's got a reputation for gunning men down without waiting for the customaries. James dead, and then maybe you. That's thinning the sonnet hood out from the wrong end. You figure on getting him alone, don't you, Grandpa? I tell you what, boy, we ride in together later. Is that a bargain? The bargain. Oh, best 
let the boy fret it out alone, Pat. Yes, Boosum. You know, Jim's death hit us all pretty hard. I guess it's worse than him. Jim's dead. It's mighty hard to believe. We can get into town. Come on, Frank, drink up. There's a lot of cattlemen who want to stand you around for that. Don't touch it, Corbett. I don't want folks saying your aim was all fuzzied up when I called you. I'm going to give you the same chance that you gave Jim Sonnet. Maybe a better one. Look, kid, this is Frank Corbett. If you know... I know who he is. This is between me and him. The rest of you, move out of the way. You killed a man who was going to help a friend, Corbett. A good man. A man I've been waiting all my life to meet. Well, what's holding you? You're a famous hired gun, ain't you? One kill on a day? That ain't much of a record. Now turn around. Start earning your pay. Kid, Frank. No chance. He's just a green yearling. He was shaking so bad he couldn't hit the ground with his hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand you another round for that, Frank. It's all the same to you, Mr. Adams. I'd just soon get out to the ranch and bed down. I've been pounding the saddle since sunup. Sure, Frank. Hey, when you stay here and keep an eye on the kid. Tell him how lucky he was this time. I'll be out directly, Adams. I'm, uh, I'm low on shells, and I've got some business to attend to. I reckon I can find your spread by myself. Can't miss it. Just ride north, and you're in it. And uh, run across any sheepmen on the way. I reckon you know why I hired you. I'll earn every penny you paid me. I know you will, Frank. Alive, boy. You called down one of the fastest guns in the business. Frank Corbett. Well, that wasn't Frank Corbett. That was my pa, Jim Sonnet. Now you listen to me. Frank Corbett killed Jim Sonnet. You got things all twisted. Just you tell me where he went. I gotta go out and find him before he rides off again. What's all the ruckus about? Grandpa, he was here. I saw him, Pa. He was here. Frank Corbett hit him a pretty good lick. Joggled his wits of mine. Now, I'll handle him now. I tell you, I seen him face to face. 
Hush up or I'll jog on your wits again. Grandpa, I said he's alive. They all think he's Frank Corbett. I reckon I ought to know my own Paul when I see him. I reckon so. I reckon James must have had a mighty good reason for wanting folks to think he's Frank Corbett. You mean, you think he told them he was Corbett? Must be. Then you come busting in here, rooting up all his plans like a hog let loose in a turnip patch. Well, it kind of took me by surprise. Do you, you think it's likely I'd done him any harm? Well, likely you didn't do him no good. We'd best get back to that sheep camp fast. You going to stand there and knock all day long? Come on in. Hello, Pat. Hmm? Jim. Jim Solid. Hey, how are you? Fine. Uh, you're looking great. Uh, but, Jim, we heard that Corbett had got you. He tried. But it was the other way around, huh? Pat, I can only stay but a minute. I'm taking Corbett's place and I'm due at the ranch now. I don't want them getting suspicious. Hey, that's a mighty risky game you're playing, isn't it? Well, I just wanted to stop by and let you know I was here. I'll do what I can. Uh, yeah, Jim, look, when all this is over, I got a little surprise for you. How's that? Your father and your son. What about them? They're here, Jim. They're staying with me right here. to believe. I've... I've thought about them. Both. It's been so long. You know, they say they've been looking for you for a long time, too. I never knew. And this ain't the time to... This ain't the time to meet up. Could get us all killed if Adams finds me out. Yeah. You know, when your boy heard that you were gunned down, he went wild. He tore into town to shoot it out with Corbett. And then your father followed right after him. Jeff. It must have been Jeff who called me in the saloon. Oh, no, Jimmy. You, you didn't draw on him, and... Worse. I made him the laughing stock of the town. But I'll make it up to him. I better go. All right, Jim. When they come back, tell the boy I'm sorry. And tell them to stay clear of me until I can come back here. All right, Jim. James is alive. He was here, Mr. Murphy. I saw him. Yes, I know. He stopped by on his way to Adams Ranch. He was here? Mm-hmm. Well, I was hoping we could stop him. He could be riding into a pack of trouble. No, no. You see, the cattleman think he's their hired killer, Frank Corbett. Well, maybe they did, but maybe they don't know more. <laughs> Jim said to stay clear of him until he's ready to tell the world who he really is. Well, I got a mighty uneasy feeling the world already knows. Get kept yelling, Mr. Adams. Adams is waiting for you in the stable, Corbett. I'll take your horse. Well, I see you found it without no trouble, Corbett. No trouble. Speaking of trouble, the boys tell me that after we left the saloon, that kid came to and started an awful ruckus. Oh, he's just a kid. Would have be playing with a string of spools. Then the old man came in after him and really started trouble. Oh, trail bums. More than likely they'll be gone before sundown. They're both gone now. 
got themselves shot. What's the matter, Corbett? He looked real put out. Can't see why. The boys just finished a job you didn't do yourself when you had the chance. Now, why should I be put out? What do I care if two more sonnets get killed? Now, how did you know they were sonnets? I never mentioned their names, now did I, boys? I found my way in. I'll just let you show me the way out. That's mighty slick and smooth, the way you do that. But I'm just gonna have to turn down your offer. Drop it, mister! Drop it! Up in here, they got us in a squeeze. A couple of you break outside and draw them off. Oh, they're splitting up. Let them split. Gives James a better chance inside. you empty. All right, hold it. I don't want more killing. None of us wanted it in the first place. It was Adam's idea to hire a gun, and he killed Ira Tucker just to rile the folks up. I'd stop killing now if I was you, and start looking for a good lawyer. Fargo ain't gonna be repeating that story to anybody. I figure some of the others will. You're out of business, Adams. Maybe you're right. Maybe I ought to look into prospects down south. I'll just take that ride you wanted. Only you are gonna see me out. Get your hat. Come on. Quiet inside. Yeah. I reckon your paw can handle him. We can just keep these fellas busy outside. Pa! Ah, this is James. Hold your fire. I'm riding out with Adams. I'll try to get word to you. Adams is getting away and he's got Paul. There's no more need to worry about your kinfolk following us. They'll be coming. They're probably both dead by now. Sonnets are real stubborn about dying. Then you can be the first one. Show them how it's done. Now, you get off this horse first. Real easy-like. So you don't get no ideas about running off with the horse.
Jim. Ah, hey. I'm on my way now. I guess you can handle the situation here. Yeah, thanks to the silence. I'll be heading north. I want to get in as many miles as I can before sundown. It's a mighty fine looking boy. Mighty fine. Jim, someday it'll work out for you. It's got to. That's right. You did tell him we were looking, didn't you? I told him, Jeff. What did he say? He said he didn't want to see you anymore. He said too much had happened, too much that made you strangers. He said there wasn't anything between you anymore. Well, he... he didn't want to? I mean, you told him we'd been looking. Yes, Jeff, I told him. You're a nice man, Mr. Murphy, real nice. So much so, you lie real bad. Now, you tell me straight, Mr. Murphy. Did James mean all them things you said, or did he tell you to tell us he meant it? He said it, Mr. Sonnet, but he was bleeding all the time, hating to hear the words that his mouth spoke. You know, there must be an awful lot of love in that man for you, for both of you. <laughs> Come on, son. We got us a ways to go. Dear Lord, for a time, we seemed so close. It was true that James was there. But we learned what we wanted to know the most. In his heart, deep down, James does care. One said they was waiting on a telegram. And the other one said he could take Jim Sonnet drunk or sober. Well, then somebody's gonna let him know where Paul is? Well, all we gotta do is wait and follow him. Well, that's one way. Well, what else can we do? Get that telegram before they do. I didn't mean to awaken you. Then why light the lamp? <laughs> it's supper time. Yeah, I feel more like breakfast. Steak and eggs? And lots of coffee. Good, I'll go across the street and order it, and then we can eat here. Oh, well, that is, of course, unless you still don't trust that room upstairs. I was asleep. You looked out for me. I trust you, Willie, wherever you say. Good. Will you go right up those stairs, and I'll be along with the food shortly. Jim? When did you fall asleep? About an hour after I closed my eyes. How'd you know? My breathing? Uh-uh. Your lips. They moved slightly when I kissed you. Yeah. They do that every now and then. Uh. Oh. Oh, you ought to know better. Don't talk, Sandy. Don't talk. My head is killing me. Who is it? Man from the telegraph office. Well, it's about time. Give it to me. Well, hold on now. My orders is to deliver this only to the man who sent it. What's your name? Now, look, old man. You yeah, gotta know your name. Oh, it could be either one of us. I'm Duke Edwards, and this is Sandy Blake. Duke Edwards or Sandy Blake, huh? 
Now give it to us, old man. Be glad to. Jeff! Now step back there slow. Then buckle them gun belts. Slow now. Sit yourself down on the edge of that bed there. Jeff, you watch him till I get back. Look, what is this? Quiet. The boy's got orders to shoot if you move. That goes for moving your mouth, too. Now look, Sonny. That's not talk. You just pay attention to that there key. And you tell me right off as soon as you get a message come in from me or my partner. Yes, sir. Mr. Blade, Blake, and, and, and your partner's name is, uh... Duke Edwards. Now, pay attention. This time, my love, you really are asleep. Now tell me who Milhorn is. We don't have to tell you nothing. No? You was hired to wait here until you got word where Jim Sonnet was. Then you was hired to ride there and kill him. He was hired by a man named Milhorn. Now, we don't like folks wanting to kill James Sonnet. This here is James's son. I'm his father. So you can see now, either we get the truth out of you, or we leave you dead. So you can't be harming my boy. All right. Well, Milhorn and his brother picked a fight with Jim about a year ago. Jim killed his brother, only winged Milhorn. So Milhorn wants revenge. He wants to be in on the kill. If we got a telegram, so did he. Is this Milhorn in town? Not this one. He's in Waco. All right. Stand up and move into the corner. Jeff, you rip up in the machines. I am good. Where is it, Grandpa? I didn't want to read it in front of them. Jim Sonnet here. Better hurry. Have telegraphed Mill home, and he is on way. If he does job alone, you won't be paid. Come to my place in Benton Flats. It's signed just Angela. Come on, let's go. Good morning, anybody said to me in years. Miss Drake? Huh? Miss Drake, it's important. What is it? You told me to stand guard, not let anybody in. There's a crowd out there who wants their morning drinks. They open up or not? It's all right. 
right now, Pete. The danger is past. The gentleman is away. Yeah. How far do you figure to Benton Flats? It's too far to go with a, not a breather for these horses. I reckon another 15 miles, give or take a hill or two. Well, this Mill Hoon, what if he gets there before we do? Well, he just might. Yeah, but an ambush paw, I mean. Son, there's been many an ambush set for your paw the past 20 years, but the good Lord has kept it from happening. And I say it's still up to him. When it happens, and if it happens. Well, I wish I had your faith, Grandpa. You do, Jeff. I've just had mine with me a sight more years, it's all. Well, let's go. They're rested enough. It's hot. Yeah. You said you could stay for a while. I said I could stay until I have to move on. And just when might that be? Somehow, I just never seem to know. Well, at least you're rested. That I am. What would you like to do today? We could, um, we could stay here or go for a walk or take a drive. Whatever. The whatever sounds good. But the drive sounds safer. There's some pretty country around here. Lady, country to me is just something to go through. But with you, maybe it could be different. I'll have Peter get the buggy hitched. <sighs> this is my favorite spot. What do you think? I think... If I had to get away fast, I'd use the gores instead of crossing the lake. Will it always be this way? The man has to pay for what he's done. Has to be what he becomes. Always. I don't know. Can a man undo what he's done? Can he not be what he is? I don't know. I can wish a lot, but I really don't know if wishes come true. You're something I've never met, Jim Sonnet. I thought we came for a drive. So did I. But I'd... I'd suddenly like to go home. And I'd like to lock the doors. I'd like you inside the doors. I'd like you safe. Locked doors are never safe. They're just as hard to get out of as to get into. But with you, I feel safe, Angela. Jim, I want to go home. Then we go home. Don't lock it. Maybe we were talking about two different things a while back. Yes, maybe. I want to change my clothes. I'm a working woman, remember? Come out here. People work for you downstairs. You give orders. You don't have to dress any certain way to give orders. Now go down and tell them what to do and then come back. And don't take long. Now I 
want all of you out. No questions. Just everybody out. Now. <laughs> Peter, you too. Hey, sorry, we're closed. You just opened again. The man said we were closed. We are. Not to me, you're not. I'm Duke Edwards. Sandy's waiting outside. Now, where is he? Where's Jim's sonnet? Milhone offered us a lot of money, and we aim to earn it. Well, he left. I, I couldn't keep him. Not ten minutes ago. He rode east. Ten minutes ago? Maybe five, but if you hurry... Yes, ma'am. Peter. Peter, get Mr. Sonnet's horse saddled and bring it out front here, quickly. Right. bought this place for me. You're expensive. I was married once to a man with strong dreams. I left Boston with him to come out west. He didn't have any money. Just strong dreams. And Milhone had no dreams. Just money. A runaway team ran down my husband in Kansas City. I borrowed the money from Mr. Milhone to bury him. I owed Mr. Milhone something. I'd have dug a hole for free. You know the whole story. But you don't. Milhone and his brother were kicking around a colored man who was drunk and out of line. I didn't like what he was doing either. But I like worse to see two men kick one. I ask them to stop. But they just... Well, it happened. But not in the back. Don't drink anymore, Jim. Don't talk anymore, lady. I sent him away. You heard me send him away. That you sent for them at all is what burns more than this whiskey. If they don't find your trail, they might come back. Yeah, they might. Then you shouldn't be drunk. I'm never drunk. It could slow you down. Nothing has yet. I might have to kill those men. Or be killed yourself. That's what counts. You're wrong. Everybody counts. Think twice, Milhone. Stay with this woman. Don't die in this street. It's you who's got to die, Sonnet. We all do, someday. But you're trying to rush it. Your two hired guns aren't here to help you. And you could never do it alone. You got a holstered six gun. I got a shotgun. I can draw in the time it'll take you to raise it. I can fire as you cock it, and you'll be dead and falling even before your reflex can pull the trigger. That's big talk. It's not talk, Milhone. I don't brag. I know. And if I die, you think that makes you live, Sonnet? Angela sent a telegram to two gunfighters. I sent for five more. I don't see them. With a man like you, I never believe what I don't see. 
They'll be along. If not today, maybe tomorrow. You might not see tomorrow. Doesn't matter. I left $5,000 with my lawyer in Kansas City. They collect only if they show your body to my lawyer, if I'm dead or alive. You see, Sonnet, I plan for you to die. Whether I'm around to see it really doesn't matter. You could love me, Jim Sonnet. I could. Another time. Another world. We might even have had a son. A son I could keep. Yeah, lady. It could have been. But it ain't. Why didn't you say who you really were? He was right. He was right behind those curtains, right there. I know, but it just wasn't meant to be, ma'am. We didn't know your, well, we didn't know your sentiment. Neither did I. Was there anything else, ma'am? I mean, anything he might have said? The boy wants to know, did he ever mention his family? No, I don't. Yes. Before he left, he, he said something very personal about him and me. And then he said, we might have had a son, a son he could keep. We'll be leaving now, ma'am. You can understand wanting to hurry. We're close and there is a chance. Ma'am. Thanks for showing us that James is living still. We pray you'll soon unite us, if that should be your will. You know, I done a little figuring this morning. And I calculate we ought to, well, we ought to think about settling down somewhere for a couple of weeks, find us some work. Might we running out of money, Grandpa? Well, not out. Just low. Say, what's the name of this here town, anyways? I lose track. Larkin. Larkin, huh? Mm hmm. Two weeks and four days without a sign of James. Yeah. Eat this. I ain't touched it. Mm. You eat it. You haven't been eating like you should, anyway. Eat up. Come on. Look, I don't need no young'un to tell me how to put a fork to my mouth. Where's that newspaper at? <laughs> you know, it's only three days old. Already you've looked at it at least six or seven times. Come on, give it to me. <laughs> might not mention James in here, but it could have something that he might be reading at the same time as us. You know, that's how we near caught up with him in Plainsville. Him and us reading the same paper article about Al Conquest. You remember that? Al Conquest being hurt? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. We just missed James by a couple of hours that time, didn't we? <laughs> Now remember, boys, I'm buying. Do you hear that? You hear me, George? I'm buying today. Actually, I should say Jim Sonnet is buying. <laughs> well, how often do I get a chance to get Sonnet's name in a headline, eh? He says papers, right? <laughs> you setting up Jim Sonnet for the sake of peddling extra papers, Quiller? Now, however do you mean? Sonnet does come to Larkin to give evidence for that fella Coley Flynn tomorrow. He could get himself killed, couldn't he? I couldn't possibly say, my friend. <laughs> I'd like to buy one of your papers, mister. Oh, sure. Haven't you seen a copy of the Clarion yet, friend? We just rode in. Oh, there you are. No charge. Well, 
My friend, if you're a stranger here, I don't think that paper's going to bring you quite up to date. You see, if that little man in the jail was telling me the truth when I wrote that article, he's not guilty. And if he's not guilty, then it's got to be Walt Granger. And I don't think Walt will take too kindly to Jim's son had come in here to give evidence. What do you think, boys? Max <laughs> Williams, what he'll do. That'll sure enough sell some papers. Walt Granger is the toughest foreman in the biggest ranch in the county. He's got about 15 guns behind him and the sheriff in his back pocket. If Sonnet comes, he's walking right into the biggest reception party you ever saw tomorrow morning. So, uh, enjoy the paper, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to testify, Grandpa. If that fella in jail is telling the truth, and James can testify to him being innocent, then you just bet your life he'll be here in the morning. calls yourself Coley Flynn. I was wondering if when you was questioning him, he said anything about coming from Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, no. Didn't question him. No need to. He just plain killed a man, got himself caught. No need to ask questions, is there? I expect you'd be a lawman. Well, then, you guess you get no objections to me asking him a couple of things, huh? Uh, I don't know. About what? Well, for one thing, about a... A couple of bond burnings back in Lincoln. Look, mister, he's gonna hang right here in Larkin. No need to wonder if he's a firebug in Nebraska. Well, that's fine. Since you got your case all wrapped up, you won't mind me taking a couple of minutes of his time. You mind opening that door there? Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt nothing now. I'll have to come with you. So I'll park your guns out here. Yeah. He's here, a couple of lawmen from Nebraska. Expect they'd like a statement from you about them barns you burned. I didn't burn no barns. Where was you and that James son at last October 16th, if you want, in Lincoln County? October? 16th. With James Sonnet. I, I don't exactly remember. But I know it wasn't with Jim Sonnet. It, it couldn't have been. I just seen him the one time, the night Walt Granger killed my partner, Bud Sprague. There he goes again, that same old lie about Walt. Walt Granger's his brother-in-law. You can see nobody's gonna believe me. Unless Jim Sonnet comes back. You expecting us to believe you never set eyes on James Sonnet before that night? Swear to God, mister. Bud and me was hightailing for town with Walt Granger right behind us, firing at us every other step of the way. Because he, he was down on Bud for something, see? We rode into where... Jim had made camp in a stand of oak by a little creek. And, and we recognized him right off from the poster, see? And he ran out to help us, and he fired off a couple of shots at Granger. He didn't mean to hit him, though, because he, he didn't really know what was going on, see? And when Granger saw a sonnet, why, he hauled in on his horse and tore off. Didn't notice till then that Bud had been hit. Sonnet me took care of him that night. I took him into town. But he is dead. They... They arrested me right off, though, because... Granger had it rigged with his men to say he'd never left the camp the night before. But Sonnet didn't even know that Bud had died. Guess he... just... rode off, Summers. I sure hope he... Reads the newspapers. Because they're sure enough gonna hang me tomorrow if Sonnet don't show up in court today. Hey, boys. I want a man on every road, trail, and cow path leading into here. Me and some of the boys have been through town. Sonnet ain't around yet. But we don't need his kind in our town. You boys take care of the roads coming in. Me and the others will take care of the town streets and the courthouse. Let's go.
So you think if I was to drive across that bridge, it, it might break it down? No, I didn't exactly say that. I just mentioned that last big rain. You know, a rain like that puts a fair strain on a wooden bridge. We ain't had no rain recently. Look, all I know is they sent me out from town to warn folks about this here bridge. Now, what? What are you carrying in them barrels? They heavy? Household goods, mostly. Uh, we're moving to town. I got some pots and pans and some blankets and stuff like that there. What's it to you? Well, the, the whole load likely to weigh uh, more than a ton, a ton and a half, you suppose? Well, couldn't say. I didn't weigh it. Oh, well, of course not. Hey there, what? Well, I think you're all right. That one won't go more than 70 pounds. That one, 150. Mister, I think you're in luck. You, you think it's all right, then? Practically guarantee it. Well, thank you. Just an old man and a hearse. What? A hearse? Dad blasted, I should have warned you. Remember that time we heard James was used a hearse in Aberdeen to get past the posse? He was hiding in the casket. Did you get a look-see in the casket? Well, no, sir. Well, well how long ago did it go by? Well, maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. Let's see if we can catch up. until tomorrow. You got it all mixed up, friend. Trials today, hangings tomorrow. I've got nothing to do with no hanging. Just passing through. Who you got in there? Some dead fellow, Mr. Undertaker? Nobody. There ain't nobody in there. Oh, you got the curtains pulled. There must be somebody in there, Mr. Undertaker. I told you there wasn't anybody in there. Casket's empty, huh? It's, it's empty. You guarantee me there's nobody in that pine box, my friend? I guarantee you. Empty. All right. Boys. Let's give the next passenger in that box a little air. Son, it ain't in a hearse, and he ain't in a courthouse. I'm beginning to think he ain't coming. Everybody off the streets. I want men front and rear of this court building. You boys up on the roofs, you stay there. I don't want no surprises at this trial. You two better stay clear. Get off the streets. Scared me to death, Grandpa. Thought for sure he was in that hearse. Oh, you did, did you? Well, he might just be at that. Well, but we saw the inside of that coffin. Sure, so did all them fellas with Granger. Now look, when we hit that tie rail over there, you just keep your eye peeled for that old hearse.
that, Grandpa? I seen, I seen. He got in, I wonder how he's gonna get out. walk out and everything will be peaceful as can be. And on the other hand, you might need all the help we can give you. I'll tell you what we do, George. So the fact is, Mr. Flynn, you were the last person to see the deceased man alive. When you appeared at the doctor's office, Bud Sprague had been dead for some time. It appears the state has a very good case. What say you, sir? Well, sir, Judge, me and Bud was partners. We grew up together. We'd, we'd been riding fence when we found somebody wired off the water hole. There was no barbed wire around that water to keep out the whole U.S. cavalry. And it belonged to Bud, too, that water. Well, I'd like to hit the sky when it's all that barbed wire. And he fetched his cutters and just about had it cleaned out. We seen Walt Granger coming. Walt had himself a rifle. And he commenced firing before we could even climb into the set. Mr. Silent, you seen the newspaper. <laughs> Excuse me for coming in this way, Your Honor. My name is Sonnet, James Sonnet. You see, Your Honor, although I don't know the man I'm testifying for, I did see the shooting. I've been accused of many things in my time, but I've never been known to lie. And you can identify the man who did the shooting, can you? Yes, sir, I can. Please point him out, Mr. Sonnet. That man, Your Honor. <laughs> Sheriff, put that man in custody. The defense witness will be honored by this court. Are the charges against this man dismissed? He's free to go. Order. Order in the car. Jim Sonnet's in there and he ain't gonna get out. Now somebody go get the horse. Surround the building.
Yeah. We ain't gonna make up that head start in one long run, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm just a little over anxious, Grandpa. Well? Hey, look. These here wheel tracks are still clear, though. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt the lope a ways. No, sir. <laughs> hey, look, Grandpa. How about that trail over there? I bet we could cut them off by going that way, huh? That looks good. Come on. Yeah. This here's Jeff. You in there, James? Will Sonnet? You the daddy? That's a fact. This here's your son. Why doesn't he come out? He is in there, isn't he? No, he isn't, son. We took him to where his horse was tied, and we seen there wasn't nobody following, so we figured we didn't need him. How far back was that? Twenty minutes, half hour ago. I don't suppose he said where he was heading. As a matter of fact, he didn't. Say, you... You looking for him, are you? Yes, sir. We're looking for him. We have to keep on riding, Lord to find the one we seek. But we helped a man in, in need today and commend him to your keep.